Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today I'm taking a request directly from my YouTube channel. John Winder asked me about V4 and how he would get started with V4. And so I'm going to do my best to sort of walk through what V is and the new things that are available in V4. Let's get started. So I'm going to make the assumption that you have used Node, NPM, and those sorts of tools to write JavaScript. So I'm not going to go way down deep, but I'm going to be talking about the Vite tool in itself. And I'm here in a console, and I'm just going to create a new project by saying init Vite at latest. This will get the latest version, in this case, 4.0, though if you want to stick to a specific version, you could put the version in there. This is going to ask us a few things. So I'm going to say vanilla v as a project name and we'll see why next so here it's asking me to select a framework now this is the thing that's interesting about v even though i think v is probably most known as doing work with react and Vue, it actually works with a number of other platforms in fact that platform number is growing exponentially so i'm going to start with the simplest version of this which is just a vanilla app with javascript and what it's done is it scaffolded me an app which we can see here, and I'm going to go ahead and just open this up in code. And so let's talk about what Vite is actually doing. If we execute this by looking at the NPM scripts and just say two things. One, we're going to need to install all the pieces. And of course, we could have done this all at the console, npm install. And then we're going to run this script that's inside of the package.json. You can see the scripts here, pretty simple. Run Vite on its own in this directory, and it will launch your application in a development mode. You can then build it, and you can also do a preview, which is similar to build, but is with release or production versions of the project. So we're going to ignore build and preview for now. We're going to come back to build later. And let's go ahead and just run dev. And here we can see it wants to open up a browser. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to use Edge in this case, just because it's a cleaner browser. And now we've got our awesome looking site, right? Ooh, exciting. Um, and it has some functionality in it, in that it's a counter. The trick of what we're doing here, because this could be any back-end or front-end framework, but Vite isn't a framework. If we look at the HTML that's going to be hosting for development, first there's a div called app, and this is where your code is going to be hosted. Now, this is just by convention. This is just the boilerplate. You can change this to 100 different things you want. But it assumes that in the main.js that we're going to need to do things in this app, right? Again, it's vanilla JS, so all we have is a main.js that just finds the app, puts some code in there, and then does some setup for the counter, right? And one thing you should notice here is it's importing from another file, or you could be importing from node modules as well. So I'm going on the assumption that a lot of you see this already. You can even see the import here for style, right? It's going to inject all of that into the project for us. But what does injecting really mean? Again, back at the HTML, there is this magic line, script type equals module. And this is a newer facility in browsers, and you may or may not be able to use this in all the browsers you're using. But for development time, this is very important because what this does is actually loads this .js file and it turns all the imports into static code that it injects into the browser for you. So I don't know if you noticed it before. Let me stop this for a second and run dev. It's just about immediate. And in fact, if we come back up here and let's change something we're, we're doing in here, like hello world, and when I save it, it's going to arrive right here. In fact, even if I look at the counter code, which we can see is just moving one up, it's going to do hot swapping of code. So we come over here in the, to the counter and make a change by saying counter equals counter plus one. I'm going to make it go up by two from now on. And so it becomes this very tight loop in development that you probably use with Vue CLI and React and even Angular to some respects does it this way. But why is Vite special? It's because that startup experience is really, really quick. If we look at all of our network connectivity, I'm going to refresh this because something interesting is happening. 
Once we load this file, you can see that that main.js is being loaded. And then that in turn is saying, oh, there's an import for style CSS. Oh, there's an import for JavaScript SVG and VSVG. The counter JS is then brought in and it loads some other things that are V specific to make all this magic happen. Now, this might imply that V wants to be your server and it doesn't. V is not made to be a server, it's made to be a development server very specifically. And that's an important idea to get your head around because what happens if we close this and we run the build, we can see with, because it's a small project, it didn't take almost any time. It's created a dist folder where the index contains the same ideas, except this module being loaded has been built for us. So there's no longer any idea about what pieces are being loaded. This file, which is by default compressed, is a calculated version of that. Now, of course, because our code is so small, this really doesn't bias any, but the idea is here that you could distribute this app as is directly to your users, right? It's this built app, and this is being built by using Rollup. And one of the big features in V4 versus V3, if you're coming here from that space, is there have moved from Rollup 2 to Rollup 3. And that's given it some additional features. Though if you're moving from Rollup 2 to Rollup 3 inside of a V project, there is some manual manipulation of any Rollup specific builds. So we can see the benefit of sort of the development time with this tiny JavaScript project, but that's not actually that interesting. Let's close this again. And I'm going to go back to the root folder and I'm just going to run the latest again. And this time I'll call it view because I'm going to create a view project, though you could pick any of these. And because it's not just vanilla JS, we have some options here. Do we want to use TypeScript or JavaScript? And it'll start us directly in a project using JavaScript. But something you may have not noticed, let me just kill this and then we'll do it again. So we call it again, we'll call it view again, we'll say view. And while the only thing you really can do here is pick whether it's JavaScript, TypeScript, or these additional layers of customization. You can see if you wanted to install it as Nuxt, you could go do that. And then there's this create view that allows you to really select some more additional things. This is a more in-depth way of choosing what the boilerplate is. So I'm gonna say TypeScript, I'm not gonna support JSX. I do want a router. I do want Pina for state management, and I'm going to say no to testing just to make the amount of code we have pretty simple. Probably want to say yes for all of these. And so if we go ahead and say, and bring in this project, we're talking about V as an ecosystem, because what this has done is allowed us to do some customization, build a brand new view project with some opinionated defaults. So we have our starting position, right? So inside this source, if you've done view before, you should be really familiar with this. App view, main.ts, and you'll see this has all those ideas built in by default. If we install it first, this will take a bit more time, but through the magic of video, we're gonna compress it down. And I'm just gonna stare into your eyes until it's done. And there we go, it's been installed. And what does this package.json actually look like for a more complete project, not just a little JavaScript? It still has the dev, build, and preview, but because we're using TypeScript, it's also going to run the view tool to make sure that it's type safe as well. Basically a dev time builder to see if there's any type problems. And then we have some other dependencies that we're gonna use, view, view, router, and pina are all for runtime, and these are all included for development time, right? And so just like before, we're going to see in index.html here, we're going to see about the same project, right? Except this time it's pointing at a TS file, not a JS file, but a TS file. And that's important to note is that V is transcoding the TS to JS. When it sees this and makes this request, what V returns is going to be compiled JavaScript since that is runnable in the browser. It's not trying to be too cute. So let's go ahead and run it, make sure it runs. Let's open this back up. And here we can see a more complicated project. In fact, I'll make it a little smaller so we can see this. And we have a multi-page spa project that it has created the boilerplate for us. And it's done the same idea, but because we're dealing with view and TypeScript, right? What if we come in here and look at the components and the welcome? 
and then welcome is going to have these different pieces right and so if we come back here to let's say tooling or documentation and let's change this to docs for the most part it's not going to need to do a reload right again we're making changes and they're being updated pretty much instantaneously obviously not instantaneously but close to it i'm really happy with the hot swapping that vite does is really smart and really does a really great job of it one of the things to note is sometimes this does fail and you do need to refresh but of course refresh is going to be based on the latest code that you did include and if we debug this because again this is just view so if we wanted to go look at sources these will all be the same sources we had and main.ts will allow you to look at this as just the plain OTS as you would expect it's doing the right thing even though v is transpiling it for us and we could set breakpoints and do whatever we need to do here in the browser so with a more complicated project like this let's go ahead and build it Again, the idea here is to take the project that was being hot loaded and go ahead and include it into our project. And you'll notice that this is breaking it up into separate JS and CSS files for you. That's more about how Vue and Rollup works, not necessarily how Vite works. We end up with this disk folder. And the idea here, let's open this up in its own folder so that we can just go live and we can see this application running without any server behind this, right? This is just a plain HTML that has the assets to make the spa work. And so V isn't about changing the way you write any of these frameworks. V is about allowing you to develop them faster and deploy them and build them. So let's continue this conversation down below the like button in the comments. You may have things that I wasn't covering here that you'd like to know more about. You may have found an error in what I'm doing, and I'd love to hear that because I'm not perfect, certainly. Or just things that you don't like about Vite. And let's have that discussion why you don't want to use Vite. Because I'm really curious how the community feels about Vite. I'm a big fan, but that doesn't mean everyone is. If you've gotten this far, please go ahead and like and or subscribe. It all helps me a tremendous amount. My day job is training, both video-based and in person, as well as I do some consulting work. You can learn all about that at seanwildermuth.com. Thanks for joining me in this coding short. See you next time.